is where I'm at at the moment with the pins and I've been pricing them all together because obviously some of them have got um, more colours. Um, if you are interested in seeing how I put my in our pin files together, I did do a whole video last year breaking it down. I did a really uh, simple to follow step by step guide to making your own enamel pins. I will link that video down below but it is a project I worked on last year with my last enamel pins but these ones are the new ones for the Kickstarter. This one has a special place in my heart but then <laughs> the rabbit when I did this one it was actually a Christmas design. The rabbit was and he had um, baubles in his mouth from the Christmas tree and I never used him for anything else so I thought I'd bring him back and turn him into more of a spring summery rabbit pin. Obviously we have the mouse and I wanted to make it a bit more enamel pin friendly which is why I added the little strawberries in there otherwise it would have been quite intricate um, metal work down here. I've got a fox of course and a little toadstool mushroom snail up here then I've put together this tiny little mushroom that's going to be a free pin if we hit a certain amount of backers I'm thinking if we reach 250 backers on the Kickstarter I'll put a freebie pin into each parcel but yeah they're all coming together really nicely happy with these I feel like I could do the cup of tea but also I don't want to risk waking my son up <laughs> Yesterday wasn't a good nap day, he was asleep for about half an hour and I was like, no. So I have got a fair amount to be working through at the moment, so I'm also doing mermaid. So I'm trying to do some illustrations in the evenings whilst doing planning and stuff like that, the bulk of it during the day when hopefully he naps. It varies day to day, sometimes I get half an hour, sometimes I get two and a half hours. I don't usually like him to sleep any longer than two and a half hours in one chunk. He only has one nap a day as well and has done for months now. But yes, I don't like him to nap any longer than two and a half hours just so it doesn't interfere with bedtime in, in the evening because then I go back to work and do a couple of hours each evening. But it really varies from day to day whether I get 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, hour and a half, two and a half tops. But today has been okay so far. He's actually just woken up so um, off we go. <sighs> okay then, okay, okay, okay. Today's Wednesday again. I thought I would use the opportunity to have a proper sit down and catch up and tell you all what I've decided to do uh, from last week's, or was it two weeks ago now? I'm a bit behind because it's been a bit chaotic in these parts over the last few days, but I have made a decision. It took me a few days to kind of make it a solid decision because there was a lot going through my mind but I thought we'd sit down and have a little chat about everything because last the, the last video it ended on kind of a bit of a mm, I really expected to be able to press the launch button on my Kickstarter at the end of that video and like film the pressing of the launch button but it wasn't meant to be and the reason being is I just felt that those keychains weren't they weren't 100% and if they're not going to be 100% I don't want to send them out to you so I actually went away and I thought about it and I thought why am I going for acrylic when I have had wooden keychains made I will show you some clips of my previous ones but I have had wooden ones on my own set of keys for literally years my own designs that I've had there's a unicorn one that's definitely on my house keys and that's been on there for years now and there's not a scratch on it and I am quite brutal also my child often likes to hold my keys and the amount of times he's dropped my keys or even you know flung my keys accidentally and that keychain is just there's not a mark on it and I thought to myself why am I going for acrylic I think I went for acrylic because of the aesthetics of it I thought oh acrylic's a bit different for me and it's a recycled acrylic so that's another reason I justified going with a plastic and what I actually did was I thought I'm going to reorder the samples so I've spent a lot of money on samples ah! I can't even remember how much on two more samples so I got a fox and I got a mouse because they are the keychains that I have put forwards and I'm waiting at the minute let's just see if the I am waiting at the minute for the artwork proofs to come back and as I said or have I said because this is honestly I tried filming this little segment now like four times because of just the various interruptions mainly my washing machine 
going to be honest. But I figured out this is what was going through my mind. I thought even if I get samples ASAP and I aim to launch again ASAP, these samples are not going to be with me until I'm predicting end of May. Uh, maybe the last week of May if I'm lucky, but like I'm not banking on it being here within the next week, let's just put it that way. Because May is just rife with bank holidays, we've just obviously had the coronation and we've also had, we had a bank holiday at the start of May, then we had the coronation weekend and I think there's more. Is there more bank holidays this month? There's a bank holiday at the end of May, I know that much. Spring bank holiday. Why is the King's birthday in my phone? Why, why I didn't ask for that to be there? No, 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 no. Now I don't think I've actually shared much of this with all of you, it's something I've been babbling away about over on my Patreon page for the past couple of months but I was planning on doing a bigger Kickstarter in the summer, uh, I wanted to do more washi tapes, I wanted to make some enamel pins which is what you will have seen me tinkering about with within this video and I thought I'll do a bigger Kickstarter and I'll do washies and I'll do enamel pins. I'll do washi tapes, enamel pins, I'll do sticker add-ons, but I thought why can't I just mash the two Kickstarters together and put the keychains with the others. So my theme that I've been working towards with the bigger summer Kickstarter is the cottage core collection. So I wanted to do things like teapots and keys and secret garden and all that kind of stuff with obviously lots of woodland mashed in there because it's me and I thought that these keychains would not look out of place at all as part of that collection and I thought rather than do two kickstarters back to back because I don't feel that that's very fair I don't feel it's very fair to try and you know get everybody together to support a kickstarter and then expect them to do the same again literally back to back within a couple of weeks even of each other I just think that that's it's not it's not a great move and I also realized as well for international people if you did want to support both Kickstarters you've then got to pay for two lots of postage whereas if I just do the one Kickstarter everything is in one place you're paying for one lot of postage for everything to be in one box so it's a bit scary because it's gonna be a big Kickstarter in terms of there's a lot on there I've been doing a lot of planning but I've got five washi designs in mind I've already done two of them I'm halfway through the third but I've got five initial washi tape designs and then I have the two keychains and then I have five enamel pin designs and I also thought I'd throw in some freebies too so if we reach a certain amount of backers I'll pop in a free sticker and if we reach uh, beyond that benchmark should we say if we reach another another goal I will add in a free enamel pin in an exclusive little mushroom design that I've done that's got a little bit of a little bit of glitter on the top as well which I thought was super cute. So that was the postie and my terrier is there. <laughs> I took the parcel which was for my husband and then my husband got home from doing errands and he's now gone out to his studio shed and now I'm back up here and there was a delivery truck outside making quite a lot of noise and it's just like anyway now I've got to try and remember what I was saying or where I was at with my little story with my little story time was just drink your coffee and shut up Ellis so I was kind of aiming for you know originally a July launch for this the bigger summer kickstarter but I'm actually going away for a couple of nights in July so I was looking at a timeline made myself literally I mapped it all out on paper and I was like alright if I launch here here or here so I figured that I would aim to launch by 1st of June is what I'm going to aim for and that should hopefully give these keychains plenty of time to you know sort themselves out see where we're at in terms of a sample and yeah it's just something that I feel very uh, passionate about is I don't want to send you something that I wouldn't be happy to receive and I'm not just here 
to take your money and run I want to be able to give you something super super cute and worthwhile and obviously a Kickstarter is a great way to go about doing that because we all club together to make something come to life it's something that I always really enjoy doing and this time around I thought that we could just mash it all together make it one big project now I need to find a home for all of these new prints so new product wise these are all in the shop now but I've got some itty bitty mice vinyl stickers if they're gonna focus there we go so i've got some of those i've also got some itty bitty snail and mushrooms then i have some of these raven bookmarks that i personally really love i love this design then i have a big stack of prints so where's going to be the best place to go through these with you i'll pop you on a tripod Okay, so prints wise, uh, I've had a lot of requests for these ones, so the set of four animal activism ones, so I've got the lamb, uh, we also went with pig as well, this one which was a favourite, and then the cow, but I've actually listed these individually in the shop, but they also come in a pack of four, so you can get one of each design if you like all of them at a discounted price. And I can't actually just express just how lovely and thick this card is. They're also printed on the back, like postcard style, I guess. I could print on the back at no extra charge, so I just thought I'd pop my um, name and website on the back, just in case. But yeah, it's very smooth, but they're nice and thick with um, a lovely finish to them. So yeah, that's those ones. And then these, there's some old designs in here, so I was able to get quite a few different ones with some older designs and I thought I'd go for these because as you can imagine printing these myself at home is drinking so much ink and it just happened to be more cost effective for me to just order these ones in so I got the Memento Mori ones which I really love and I will show you actually I've got a like a wall hanging in this design that I'll show you in a minute that's yet to find a home so if you'd like that I still have it I'll show it to you in a moment but this one which has been really popular but again it was drinking so much of my ink that I thought I'd just get some of those made this one I don't think you would have seen this was a design for my patrons back in I think it might have even been December it's quite an old one now but I liked the kind of witchy smoke behind it this one again which is a patron design that I did that I don't think you will have seen it's one of my favorites if you liked the bookmarks, we have the ravens here as a print too. I got some mushrooms, little woodland toadstool mushrooms. Then I got this one, one of my favourites. I'm trying to do more activism artwork at the moment. And then I got um, some little bears. Little bear is a character that I'm hoping to develop further um is that yeah that's all of those and then i got some of the mice as well so they are all in the shop now if i just pop you there this is the wall hanging that i made for an art exhibition um last year but i have just had it stashed away in my in my drawer with all of my fabric but i went foraging for some sticks uh, dried them out and I've got a few of these because I thought about making some more wall hangings and things later on in the year but this one um, is quite big so it's bigger than A4 but it's still waiting for a home so if you'd like to take it um, it can be yours it's just been living in my drawer waiting for the day but I've only got one of them and to be honest I think I'll just I'll only ever make just that one but yeah that one's waiting for a home there is so much that I have got in my brain at the moment that I'm wanting to make but I have made myself sit down and actually make a plan because like many creative minds I feel like I just want to do everything, I want to do all the things and if I don't get it down on paper I feel quite overwhelmed and then I get really like itching to get going but I don't know where to start so that's why I thought focus on the Kickstarter and then go from there afterwards. I 
went to the library again and I uh, went a little bit crazy. I've got all 12 of my allowance now, but I'm going to take some back on Friday. I got this one. This one was actually pointed out to me by my son and he really liked this one. But I loved the colours in it and like just all of the insects and it's, it's a flap book too. So it's got some really lovely illustrations in it so i love that so you can't see the duck and then oh my goodness so yeah that one's really cute spotty frog um i got this one for myself because it's obviously very very dark um it reminds me of grizzly tales for gruesome kids which is something i loved when i was growing up but it's got like spooky stories in it but i thought in terms of having decorative illustrations around the pages I thought this one was really interesting. Very creepy though. Look at these, these arms. Yeah, it's very dark. This was in the junior reading section, uh, I think. So, I don't know, I don't really know what age range this would be, but it caught my eye because I just loved the cover. I like how this wolf creature is like around around the uh, the title, love that. This was one that was um, grabbed by my son and I thought, yes, my boy, this has got beautiful colours in it and it's also a mix of animals and uh, humans. So that's a good one for learning how to draw both alongside each other, but looking like, you know, they belong to the same illustrator in terms of style, which is something I'm still developing. This one, kind of interesting. It's very sketchy, very rough, but the king who banned the dark. Princess Break Free. This one's got a lot of diverse characters in it, which I loved. But the textures in this one is really, really pretty as well. This one's really cute. I just, I think there's definitely a style that I go for. It's very scratchy and rough and very, very texturous. I don't even know if that's a word, but it is now. Just these characters are so, so lovely. It's given me lots of ideas for some zines to put together of my sketchbook spread so far. And I guess personal projects to help me learn and get into the flow of putting together little stories is my goal anyway. There's another postie outside. Are they gonna bang on the door? I've only got myself to blame though, because if it is, it's one for me, whereas the first one was for James. This one is one that I got last time, so you've seen this one. I'm going to take that one back on Friday, but it is on my personal wish list. Goodnight Bear, can't remember. I think that was on there as well. But anyway, I got this one because of the little mole character. It's so, so cute. Uh, this one I'm struggling to part with. This one is really, really cute. So you know how typically the story is about the child wanting the imaginary friend? This one is about the unicorn wanting the imaginary friend and the unicorn is told that children don't exist. So this book is about these two and their relationship. This one has been one of the most inspiring so far in terms of the character design. The story was really, really sweet as well. This is um, Ed and it's all about Ed and his bad mood and what he does about his bad mood. Uh, but the, the characters in this are really, really cool. Right, the postie isn't for me again this time, he's going, bye bye! But these, I love all of his different poses and positions and I love that these, there's not much to these illustrations but you can literally see the movement happening, which is something I need to work on. Uh, chasing a kite. So that's that one, I'm going to add this one to my personal wish list as well so that I can get myself a copy because I really loved this one. Then I have this one, Eight Nights, Eight Lights, and this one, which is a really pretty treasury of tales for four-year-olds but I got it because of the illustration style I thought it was beautiful I picked this uh, Wombles book up in the charity shop and it's got the cutest little illustrations in it I bought it for my son to be honest look at this in a page Wombles of Wimbledon <laughs> it's even got a little audio book at the back so I think I'm going to pop that in the car um, so that we can listen to it on journeys and stuff together. So cute, but I thought that I would find a couple and attempt, so that's quite a nice one. I thought I'd attempt to redraw some wombles, just as some warm-up sketches, but do it in my own style. Explore another artist's work, just get a feel for how 
they draw. And Womble was really cute, so I thought I'd just give it a go. 